With 6.4 on the way, we're getting the final rating tier of Endwalker. So, better late than never? Let's talk about how to prepare for a Savage Raid tier. There's quite a bit that goes into preparation that ends up being entirely behind the scenes if you're a specific type of player. So let's discuss everything that can go into raiding prep. I'll be going over the simple overview just to get you right into raiding, and the long version. This will apply to basically every raid tier going forward, assuming they do not start throwing in changes. And even if they do, most of this is likely going to remain a thing. If you like this, rate, comment, sub, check me out on Twitch, maybe grab a hoodie. Support helps creators out a lot. So let's start with the easy mode. You're just a random person looking to get into it simply as possible. First, we'll start with patch day. The content has just dropped and everyone is getting thrown into the deep end. We will have one week to prepare for Savage, since the Savage tier releases one week after the patch. First, go to the raid unlock area. For Endwalker, that's Aporia in Labyrinthos. You can tell because there's even a raid vendor here. Do the questline to its conclusion, completing all four raid fights and any additional duties attached. Then next week, when Savage becomes available, come back here once more for that unlock quest. It will just be some basic dialogue, nothing intense. But even if you have enough gear to do those normal raids, you need more gear for Savage. So let's look at our gearing options. First we have the drops from normal mode. However, you do not get direct gear drops. Each fight will drop tokens that you can trade in at an NPC, at the raid unlock location, or near the tombstone trader. Each gear piece will need a specific token, and multiples for anything on the left side. So that just means farm tokens. Well, no. You get one token per fight per week. So four tokens a week. And not every token drops from every fight. So you will need two weeks worth of tokens to get some items. Which technically we do have two weeks worth of tokens. The day Savage drops, it's a weekly reset. So you'll want to plan ahead what pieces you want from these two weeks if you're going for this gear. And if you're only using this gear, you'll need even more time. Normal mode gear is just the minimum effort and cost option. You'll also be earning new tombstones, which will allow you to buy even better gear. Using the 6.4 raid, that drops 640 gear, and tome gear is 650, upgradable to 660 with tokens from Savage, and other options in 6.5. This will gear you up except for a weapon. You need several weeks of clears of the final fight of the raid to buy a tombstone weapon, but that's the only weapon you can get from here. Instead, unlock the extreme fight from this patch and do it. This will drop a weapon, a very strong one. This will serve you well for your prog duration. The real savage prep option for launch is the next choice, with the exception of weapon. Head to your nearest market board, use the gear filters, and look at the top item in the list. We want to buy high quality crafted gear. Gear that will be the same item level as the normal raid gear. This will cost some gil if you don't make it yourself but will be the strongest option without comparing closely to the normal raid drops. Like, this crafted piece has skill speed, but the raid piece does not. Generally though, crafted will all be better because of materia. Those green circles on gear are materia slots that we will plug stat increases into. Something you learned back at level 17. Both raid gear and crafted gear have these. However, raid gear only has one or two slots. Crafted gear does two until you do advanced melding. Advanced melding means any crafted item will have five slots, regardless of the listed number. This is the fabled overmelding. Overmelding has a very high failure rate. On accessories, the fifth slot is a 7% success rate. So you'll be making a lot of materia explode, needing hundreds of them to fully meld a set. Or just be very lucky. What you should be melding onto these will vary based on what job you are but the balance will likely have a best-in-slot list before Savage comes out, so you'll know what the ideal melding and raid gear choices are if you check them out. No, I am in no way affiliated with them. They probably don't even like me. To obtain materia, there's a few ways. You may have been getting materia from doing leveling roulettes as an in-need role. Maybe you've been spirit bonding a ton, or maybe you've been doing hunt trains with your local hunters, and taking psychic damage with how toxic they are. Doing hunts, I have a... Uh... A lot. Plus the hunt currency buys even more materia. I have about 3,000 materia saved up over the expansion, so you can earn materia extremely quickly if you want to. Or you can just buy off the market board. Those of us with literal thousands of extra materia will gladly sell to you for extra gil. To do said melding, you either need a crafter of your own or a friend. 
or someone to pretend to be your friend while you meld. Crafted NPCs cannot do overmelding, only the listed slots. Overmelding always requires the listed requisite crafter level, which will be level cap. From there, it's just shoving materia in until every slot is filled. Again, do not buy the weapon in a lot of cases. The 6.4 extreme fight is going to be far easier than Savage most likely, so get that weapon, which will be 5 eye levels higher than the crafted one. And when that can mean higher weapon damage, the benefits of overmelding a crafted piece are no longer of use. Then finally we have one last goal in mind for being prepared for raid, food and potions. Once again head to the market board and check meals and the top meal should be the new ones. They should have item levels similar to the current gear levels. You'll want this for the bonus HP as well as the bonus stats. This will be listed alongside any best in slot lists you find, but you will want this food to survive the later fights. They hit hard. Potions meanwhile go through several names. As of Endwalker, we have Tinctures. Grade 8 will likely be the final tincture we will see, with 7.0 introducing a new potion name. So be sure to check with players what the current potion type is, as I have no way to know. Besides that, you want to buy potions of your main stat type. Most melee jobs get strength. Ninja, ranged jobs, and any future dexterity based jobs get dexterity potions. Mages get intelligence potions, and healers grab mind. Vitality potions? Worthless. These are very quick to go through, so you'll want to only use these when going for a clear. While learning a fight, you skip these. Food you'll always keep running just for the HP, but potions need to be used every pull rather than every 30 or 45 minutes, so you'll save them until you are ready to clear. Now that's kind of a lot, but if you want to succeed the moment the fight unlocks, you need to work for a clear. Every week gets easier with getting more gear, tomes and drops from the first fights, but until time passes, you have a huge fight ahead. But the next patch will be a huge boost in strength. So as someone coming in late, you have a bunch of advantages for prep. Cheaper gear, food, and potions. You might even be able to buy cheap pre penta melted gear. No, 10 million is not cheap. More tombstone gear, assuming you have been capping every week a relic weapon and an even stronger extreme weapon from the next extreme, and the Alliance raid gear and tombstone upgrades. While crafted gear can remain the best option depending on this or that, you have more options that are about as good and sometimes outright better. If anything is a disadvantage, it's the player base. People tend to feel better players clear sooner, and weaker players join in later. But there is no correlation, just make sure you yourself put your best effort forward. There is also, however, one other small note to make. You may notice for chest pieces of crafted gear, there is an ornate version. This is obtained via Wondrous Tales in Idleshire, all the way back in Heavensward. Chloe is a demon, but may bless you with a golden certification if you are lucky. This is how you buy these ornate pieces, the true best in slot of a new tier. The issue is, it is extremely rare to win. And if someone is selling, it costs way too much gil for something you will replace in a few weeks. But your reward is 5 guaranteed materia slots. Not only are they guaranteed slots, but you can put in the highest grade of materia into each slot. Advanced melding forced you to use one tier lower after the first overmeld, so potentially even more stats. But not much. It's like super minor. But I wanted to note it as an existing option. There's one problem for all this though, all this gear and potions and food has to come from somewhere. That's where Disciples of Crafting and Gathering come in. These classes have a lot of work to do, but also great profit if they get in early. Let's start with the Gathering. Every new expansion, there are folklore books to buy for scripts, the Gathering and Crafting currency. These are usually not too hard to get, but require a bit of grinding. They are bought with uncapped scripts, so quick to farm up. For Endwalker, you had to buy 16 tokens with scripts, then buy the folklore from an NPC nearby. Expect similar for any current expansion. This is luckily a one-time worry every expansion. What isn't a one-time worry is new materials every patch. That crafted gear will have brand new materials required, which will only appear if you have these books. They are in legendary nodes, nodes that spawn at specific times every in-game day, every 35 minutes. When the node will spawn is unknown, your gathering log will tell you after you gather it once, but until you do, it will remain unknown in your log. 
and when new materials are released, nobody knows until they're found. You are told the zone, and that's it. Good luck until then. Hope you have a good contact who gets that info quick. Even then, you have a gear problem. In between the new battle gear for raiding, there's crafted gatherer and crafted gear. You will need up-to-date gear, which can be its own big thing. Just make sure you are prepared for this gathering. In addition to all of this, special nodes like these have one gather attempt every time they spawn. You need to maximize how much you get out of every gather attempt. On the bright side, each new item tends to be on a different node, so you have time to regenerate your GP, and you can spend the entire in-game day gathering materials instead of huge pauses. One node ends, you can head right to the next node for the next material. One final issue is Ethereal Reduction for Aether Sand. You can buy Aether Sand with Gatherer scripts, but the main source will be from Reduction. This is something you do with Ephemeral nodes. They are a special type of node that spawns once per in-game day, but have a much longer spawn time than Legendaries. They will have this clock icon in the location selection, and you can collect as many as possible in that time. The collectibles, and the higher the collectability, the better. By exploding the collectible, it can turn into another item. Specific items can be reduced into Aether Sand. Several of the crafts require this sand, so if you want to gather it yourself, once again, good luck finding what gives what. Once the initial rush is over, your profits are going to be far lower, but not zero. You can still sell items, but you might just end up buying them for your crafting. They're cheaper after all, and some jerk probably just has a bot running to keep the items being spawned. So now on to crafters. Like Battle and Gathering, you have to keep up on gear from the previous patch if you want to craft this new gear. You also need to own the current Masterbook. Masterbooks are unfortunately not something you can grab as soon as you hit level cap and never think about again. The first one, sure. The second one will only be released later in the expansion, usually in the point two patch. So pretty early, but not immediately. Keeping your gear updated, gathering or buying the new materials, there can be other materials you need. Star Quartz is a normal crafted item in Endwalker, but is used in some of the raid gear recipes. So have a bunch of current expansion intermediate craft stored for this purpose. Make sure they're high quality too to minimize anything going wrong when trying to make the final gear pieces. Further though, you'll see one other new item for the special new intermediate materials. These are Tomestone materials, so we're back to battle content. If you want to prep for crafting in future, you want to have a lot of Tomestones going into a new raid tier. This includes both uncapped and the weekly capped tomes. I have over 1700 of the weekly capped tome which means I can buy a lot of materials. And then the previous uncapped tome can be traded in for the higher tier, for more materials. That might not be enough still though, so be ready to buy some on the board. But then, you have to actually craft the stuff. Even with top gear, you're also going to eat crafting food and gathering potions to ensure you are succeeding in these crafts. Crafted gear is worthless just about, unless it is high quality, so you need to stock up on that. Then you also need to figure out a rotation. Endgame crafting isn't easy. There's simulators online with stuff like Teamcraft and the in-game crafting practice button, but before trying to actually make the stuff, before actually spending your hard-earned gathering materials, make sure your rotation works. People tend to turn most crafting into macros, which is smart since it removes human error once you've set it up correctly. But to use that macro, it needs to follow a good rotation. People tend to also post these online as well, but without checking these sites, or having someone deep in the know, you will need to make your own. Which if you're a big fan of crafting, it shouldn't be too bad to do. Then again, if you come in late, buying materials becomes far cheaper. Crafting stuff yourself becomes less worth it. And trying to break into the selling some gear yourself becomes a very low profit game comparatively. But it's still potential profit. But then we're back to that crafted gear. You still have to melt it, you still need to craft or buy that food and your potions. But that's the behind the scenes you might not even realize as someone who just grabs gear from the board and goes. There's a lot of work if you want to handle it all yourself, but hopefully you got some friends or a deep wallet. Thanks for watching this little video. Hope maybe gave some people a quick realization of how to prepare for this final tier and future tiers. Like, comment, subscribe, please follow me on socials and all that stuff. 
Take care and may the power of anodid hogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Extra special thanks to the big dragons who are Eamon Al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Benjamin Rice, Bergy, Karsten Wayward, Ethan W, Fraser97, Henny G, James Hall, Jason Grout, Jeremy Abbott, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Mizella, Shimmering Blaze, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thanks again. See you around.